Hello and hi, YouTube family. Celestial here, and you are tuning into Celestial Evolution. What's up? Hello and hi. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is a stretch and talk, y'all. I'm going to get right into it because for y'all who already know, y'all already know. But this is where I get to relax a little bit and be able to talk to you all about thoughts that are coming into my head at random times because my brain is always thinking. Thank goodness for it. I'm a conscious creature. But I like to analyze the thoughts that I have in my brain because I don't think sometimes we think so rationally sometimes um, or take the time to self-reflect, possibly call out our wrongs, what we do right, and, and really self-assess to better orchestrate a more conducive lifestyle to what we want for our future selves. And that's exactly what social evolution is all about. Um, this is one portion of it. This is what I can do right now. But I definitely plan to have more talks with you all, um, possibly in my car, like most other YouTubers are doing because they're trying to make most of their time. <laughs> but um you know, Thursdays are for time to settle down. My weeks are usually really crazy, chaotic, busy. And uh, I I enjoy this time of, of solitude and, and peace just to be in my room, have my heater going, do a little stretch and talk to you all. So thank you very much for tuning in again. Um, today's topic, uh, <laughs> if you saw the title, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a little controversial. And um, for... Anybody who chooses to expose themselves on a camera to the world, you know, I'm not getting paid for this or anything like that, hopefully yet. Um, but I always see other people be able to talk their truths. And in any good church sermon, you know, the truth will set you free. And I completely agree with that sentiment because in order to live a truly authentic life, you have to be able to admit your faults because we all have them, right? We're all learning. We don't come into this world with a template. Yeah, we come into this world with a template of rules and regulations, which seems a little bit constricting and it doesn't fit everybody's lifestyle nor the want of that lifestyle. And you are feeling really repressed and you're just like, ugh. I really want to do this, but it's against the rules. And, you know, do I have to live by this code because it's been created for me? And the rules were meant to be broken, right? I mean, that's just what it is. Celestial, what are you rambling about? You you already know the topic, Roe versus Wade, okay? And Roe versus Wade was a um, case that was brought up by Miss Jane Roe, which is a fictitious name that it was meant to protect the identity of the young woman who was pregnant at the time and questioned why wasn't it right for her as a citizen of Texas to be able to abort pregnancy. She claimed that it was due to sexual assault, which is why uh, she wanted to abort the baby, but it was illegal. And I'm looking at my phone right now for the correct date, which would say 1973, um, when the case was decided to give women their reproductive rights to say, do I want this baby or do I not want this baby? Now, there are two very strong sides to this and maybe a few neutrals in the middle, but I think ultimately when it comes down to the right of the woman, I do believe that she should have a right to her body and the choice of either carrying to term a child that she most possibly will be the person solely responsible for, especially in this climate of sexual revolution, right? Um, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but if it were up to you, a little, there would be a very, very small population on this earth because kids are a huge responsibility. It's 18 years of your life minimum, unless you're a good parent and you coddle them to, you know, they, they turn the ripe age of 40. But uh, ultimately, it is an 18-year process. They eat every day. They drink every day. They need clothes. They grow out of their clothes really fast. Shoes, school supplies, college funds, emergency funds, in health care. There's so many things that go into raising a person, right? I grew up with a single mom, so I know the tragedy of 
having to deal with that reality and um everybody who is uh, for pro-life right is like well celestia if your mother had an abortion we wouldn't have you thank you yes that's very true and i'm very thankful that my mother went through with her pregnancy um and it was her choice she was a teenage mother 17 years old and had me at 18 years old and then shortly after that had my brother um but things didn't work out with my father and we were raised by a single mother thank god we had um you know role models such as uncles and aunts and grandmother and grandfathers to help that process but not everybody has that you know what i'm saying and you just can't really judge somebody's decision because ultimately we are playing god i guess but god gave us the opportunity he created the people that went to school to figure out you know how to get rid of the fetus the child whatever the, the entity that comes into our bellies by means of biology of a sperm and a ova ovum to create life and what a magical thing that is right it's really crazy but sometimes it just doesn't fit into our narrative at the moment and honestly if i'm being very honest my life means more to me than anything that i've not really met yet or gotten to see or know and is that selfish to say absolutely is it not selfish to say as well absolutely what do you mean by that well i mean do you really care about somebody that you've never met before sound really cold-hearted celestial that's your child that you're talking about well yeah uh you don't really know me um but i think this is a platform of learning and i will express a truth that i'm very ashamed of i've had an abortion surprise voila most people are shutting this off right now with all my three viewers but if you're still listening i have had one uh at the age of 21 and it was with a person who i was actually with for seven whole years um it was three years into our relationship and i just remember i'm like oh i haven't gotten my period in a while in a very long while and um yeah uh what's going on here and come to find out i don't really remember if i went to go get the pregnancy test by myself or whatever it was but i i got it and i realized that i was pregnant and i remember just having this feeling this feeling washing over me that of complete dread fear disappointment in the eyes of my family you know and i i felt that in my heart and it was sinking i didn't care about anybody else in the moment other than myself and i could just remember thinking well i'm going to have to get a you know an ab- abortion can we say that we can say that right well i can say that i don't know um and uh i i i mean i meddled over this because i grew up very religious and i'm like god's going to punish me either god's going to punish me or my family's going to punish me or i'm going to punish me and i'm like well you know karma has really gotten gotten the best of me ever since i was a little girl i mean it would beat my tush before i even could think of anything so i'm like i could only imagine what would happen if i got rid of the child that you know came so unexpectedly i didn't know my my boy, my boyfriend at the time he was said that he couldn't have children and we were honestly very cautious all the time but it was just this one time um that we weren't and that happened and i was just so devastated you know it was just really crazy and i was like i didn't want to be a mom i didn't my mom was a young mom and i was like only 4 years older 3 years older than her when she had her child you know 
Um, I barely moved into my own place. Um, we were struggling at the time. And to be very honest, if I look back in retrospect, all I could think about was, man, my family's gonna be so disappointed. I'm gonna have to rely on them and they're gonna have to help me. And I just didn't wanna do that because I, it was a lot of circumstances in my life beforehand and I wasn't a person to take handouts or anything like that. So I just said to myself, you know, I talked to my best friend at the time and I asked to borrow some cash for it and she even went with me. And I remember telling my my boyfriend at the time, you know, that I was going to do it. And he didn't really say anything. He didn't say anything. He just was stoic. And it was revealed like two, three, two and a half years later, three years later, uh, we were having one of our big arguments, you know, kind of the demise of the relationship. And he told me that he was so devastated that I wanted to get rid of the baby that you know he said we could have made it work that would have given me motivation in life and all these different things and at that time I was just like if you need a child to have motivation for your life then you've probably not succeeded at that time but I'm saying that very vindictively in my head at that time but I look back and I'm just like I was just being defensive I didn't want to you know admit that even in my mind I was just reacting out of fear it was fear Ladies, if we're speaking candidly to each other, let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it was. It was fear. I didn't want to be a, disappoint, a disappointment to my family. And I was not ready whatsoever. I hadn't yet lived life. You know, I was working three jobs already. And I was ferociously tired. Like, I was just exhausted all the time. And I'm like, bringing a child into this, would I know I was going to be the sole provider, the sole caretaker of this child? I was like, no. <laughs> but this is neither here nor there. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because this privilege of choice is possibly being overturned uh, for whatever reason. Um, it is at this point just a rumor, not a rumor, but uh, kind of being drafted like marked or something like that by the Supreme Court. And I honestly don't know who who is the person calling the shots and saying, you know, hey, we need to get rid of this um, right and privilege. But as the 21-year-old girl at that time who was just so fearful of what life would be if I had brought a child into this world, I want to defend the right of a young woman who makes a mistake, you know, or even for those, I mean, excuse me, especially for those who have been victimized, uh, things that were done against her will, you know, and resulted in a child. I mean, could you really raise a monster that was growing in you? Because that's what I would look at as that, look at it as, you know, of course it's innocent, but if Gabriel Mate has taught us anything, and I'm pretty sure I'm referencing him correctly, um, but I'll link some of his talks below, but he talks about um, DNA being more than just the physical characteristics, um, being the determinant of the physical characteristics that we have, but it's like we're machines, right? And DNA is kind of like the coding, the hard drive of that massive machine, the computer, if you will. And everything that's happened um, to your parents, their parents' parents, all this coding goes into you. And I, if you're looking at it from a religious standpoint, I'd say you're downloading demons, you know, you're downloading angels, whatever things, traumas, memories, you're uploading it all into you when you're born. And that's your DNA. I, I woke up to this article and I sent it to one of my, I have two best friends, um, I sent it to my other best friend, uh, who I talk to pretty much every day. And she's she's very rational. I love her because her mind is like that. And, you know, I was like, did you see this? You know what I mean? Is this real? And she was like, girl, I was about to talk to you about this, you know. And um, she's definitely pro-choice. Um, and I am pro-choice, obviously. But I, I got to talking to her about it. And in my mind... I'm very happy to have had the choice, you know, um, 
otherwise I would have had to suck it up and I would have had like um a, a grown ass kid right now, you know. But I like to think sometimes too, if I'm playing devil's advocate for myself, what if this does get over or what if this Roe versus Wade does get overturned, right? And the reality is is that <laughs> We're going to be looking for places to, you know, crossing state lines and boundaries so that we can get this procedure done that should be afforded to us as a right anyways. But I always think with this whole kind of like sexual revolution, people really expressing themselves and going out living their best lives, you know, with whatever, not worrying about consequences. You know, you can get an abortion. Don't worry about it. There's pro, um, what's it called? There's, uh, and, uh, Plan B, there's so many avenues to not become pregnant. And with women being, you know, the feminist movement that we're moving into of taking care of ourselves pretty much, right? We're starting to decide, do we want children? Especially when what the narrative of society and social media tells us is that most likely we're going to end up being single mothers, ladies. And that just doesn't sound enticing, especially when you can be selfish and live your life the way you want to live without having to worry about taking care of a kid, you know. And Celestial, are you not wanting to be a mother? Well, I'm not a mother yet. And honestly, I don't know if I'll be a mother because I have not found that specific person that I would want to procreate with and I'm still very much a child at heart and so with that being said I want to bring up this movie called Children of Men and I've had this discussion many a times before with people and I you know it's like a world it's a movie about a world that um, is devoid of children uh, whether it was I don't remember the premise but whether it was because of like things like infertility um, which I, you know, most women, we take contraceptives, we take things like birth control that can cause infertility. And men are opting to get vasectomies. And we're moving towards this kind of like childless type of nature. And I don't know, what if our choices were inhibited a little bit? in saying that maybe I have to be a little bit more responsible about who I choose to let enter into me because there is a very high possibility that they can create, they can impregnate me. Women, I'm saying that and I know it's like, damn, why does this always have to fall on us? We get periods already. We have to worry about being a single mother. Yeah, we, we get, you know, by the time we're 30, we're hitting a wall, we get that short end of the stick and a lot of different things. And pregnancy is definitely a big one. But ladies, with great power comes great responsibility. Without us, without our oven, there is no life on this earth. We create it. We're the gatekeepers of if there is a spiritual realm out there, which I highly do believe, you know, because what else you could explain, you know, other than biology? Yeah, sure. But I think it's something way bigger than us. And if we're more selective and we don't have as many privileges as we do, would it force us to think a little bit more responsibly? Would it tell, you know, would it give us a little bit more um, fortitude to speak to our partners, you know, because women, we do things out of self-esteem issues. You know, we want this guy so bad, so we, we want to trap him or just want to have his baby you know because it's feeling so right like he just looks so good and it just feels biologically correct right I get it oh I get it Whew, I get it oh I get it okay the spirit just a hit the sister but is he always the right person for us do we want to carry his baby 
the character that he is? Will he stick around for the real responsibilities of what a child entails? We know we can do it. There's no question, ladies, you are strong beings. God made us for a reason, to be subservient, to be nurturing, to be loving and to be caring. I want to love and nurture and care. That's a part of who I am. And I do do that, just not to a baby yet. And Celestial, so you're going back and forth here. No, I'm, I'm speaking to two realities. I do believe that we should have a choice because life is full of mistakes. You know, I can say that I've only had one and I can judge somebody who's had like three or four. Like, get it together, sister. You know what I'm saying? Now you just be in an HO. You know what I'm saying? Stop that. But, I mean, we have to learn eventually. I mean, I kind of do judge. You know, I'm on my pedestal talking about this. Three or four pregnant. Where's your girl? Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Get it together. Um, but we're all going through our different evolutions. We all think very differently. And we're all trying to find love or we're trying to find purpose or we're trying to you know, we're just caught up in the moment, right? YOLO, YOLO. But really, it is a matter of responsibility, a matter of maturity. I'm not even stretching. I'm kind of stretching, but I, I really am caught up in this topic. And when it comes to politics, I am not the person. This is not going to be a political channel. I'm purely spiritual, which is all speculative and very much my own subjective personal thinking when it comes to certain topics. Um, I try to bring the facts and uh, when I can, but this, this was like, I, I was so not about to shoot this episode because I, it is controversial and I don't like conflict. I truly don't. But how liberating is it for me to talk to you about this right now? I feel so light. And I understand both sides of the story, especially coming from a very religious background, okay? Even to this day, with all of my evidence or my thoughts about pro-choice and everything like that, even to this day, I feel guilt about doing what I did. Would my life be different? Of course. I think to myself, I'm like, do I deserve another child if I ever do get it? And if I do get that child, will that child have, you know, adverse health concerns you know and all of these different things and then I would be like I've cursed my child but I have a for me I say it was a really good episode about good and evil which I'll link below as well and I talk about people and choices and that in life our society we like to create this idea that there's good and bad right good and evil and I think we have come to terms about what is right and what is wrong, but that can also be very subjective. If you look at different cultures and different religions, there are some things that you know they do and we don't do and some things we don't do that they do. What is right and what is wrong? And I always boil it back down to what Mr. Frederick Nietzsche says, which is, there's your way, there's my way, as for the right way, there is no such thing. And that is 100% truth, y'all. There is a duality in us you know the light and the dark the good and the bad and they have to be in conjunction with each other to truly live a balanced life what's good to you may not be good to me vice versa and we are going to make mistakes in life we're human we're fallible we learn from those mistakes as long as you learn that's what real growth is. There's going to be people who judge me for my decision and me being and exposing this decision to you. Um, but we all live and we all learn and you have to accept your truths and embrace them and learn from them and take them with stride and to accept it fully as who you are. To really be liberated from it. I've learned to not judge in my life. I'm really learning. Even to this day, I'm learning, guys. And when it comes down to such a controversial topic such as this, please be very wary about 
your judgments to someone who is deciding to do this because it's not easy. When I went up to the doctor's office, someone spit on my window. You know, I'm already going through this kind of battle with my spirit and my heart and my physical body to be like, I'm making this decision, you know? I'm spending money that I don't have, borrowing it from my friends so that I can do this because I honestly just don't feel ready. But for any young woman who is conflicted by this decision in life, and uh, according to a statistic on one of the um, sites that I got the article from, I'll link it below, but one out of four women will go through with this type of procedure. And does that speak to, you know, the evil satanic run life that we're leading you know because there's a lot of things that are happening right now in our society that i don't necessarily agree with but we are free to choose and live this life the way we want to live it it <laughs> either with society's uh, stamp of approval or not we're going to do what we're going to do and what's best for us and when we start to take accountability for our lives, I think a lot more people will be a lot more liberated and free and happy. Um, and sometimes, you know, the lessons of life will curb our wants and our needs for whatever it is that we want to explore in our lives. We just have to take it in stride. I've lived life too cautiously. Like I always say in some of my episodes, if everyone lived like me, the world would be a very boring place. It really would take chances sometimes guys and don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and what you feel is right for you and what you feel you can handle in the for the circumstances that you know are you but i'm digressing very much and i don't know if i made the point that i wanted to make across with this but look into it guys right now i do believe that it's in the draft stage like i said i'm going to definitely be following this and they said that this can be more um this case is going to be more uh covered in like during the summertime and i'm a conspiracy theorist too we'll talk about those things later but i always feel like stuff like this especially you know it touching upon so many lives and the future lives of you know young women and men i feel like something bigger is in the works that's being covered up by this but who knows <laughs> anyways we'll talk about that in another episode but as for this episode i think it's finito and thank you for letting me share my truth with you today. Um, like I said, I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk about this, but I feel like it's so necessary too. And I'm gonna link another documentary that I watched, which was done by PBS about this specific thing, and it was very well done. And you know, there were a couple of women, a few women, who chose to highlight their process, you know, uh, or tape their process, and. <sighs> the scrutiny that must have come down upon them in regards to the people that are in their lives and everything. Because like I said, there are very strong viewpoints about what is right and what is wrong with this whole entire situation. Thank you very much for tuning into Celestial Evolution. I didn't really stretch much today. I am very sore. My inner thighs, I did adductors for the first time in like three weeks. And oh my gosh, but thank goodness I have a Theragun and it's fantastic. Just all in between these thighs, you know what I'm saying? So this, that's how you got into the first place, got into the situation in the first place. Hush, hush your face. But you've been tuning into Celestial Evolution. Thank you very much for joining me today and, and letting me, you know, talk about this because it's very concerning. You know, it is very concerning. And I feel like we're losing our rights little by little every single day. So I'm definitely pro-choice. And for those who, you know, who are coming into life and, and learning their truths and stuff it's definitely um something we have to keep within our society as a privilege to be able to do but learn from your mistakes ladies you know and uh, hopefully this kind of wake up call will shake us into saying oh shoot you know we can't just begin these types of procedures done every time we make a mistake you know and like five six times and stuff like learn from it choose better choose wiser and and grow and mature for yourself as well but as always keep looking learning and evolving appreciate you if you like what you heard you know like subscribe comment whatever you want to do 
Um, whoever I offended, I apologize, but not really because, I mean, it's, what's done is done, you know? And uh, I never like to start conflict, but to live is to be in conflict. And that's that. Thank you again, guys. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.